my lover and my friend. Nobody like you. God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Save my soul, God, I thank you. Setting me free, God, I thank you. Delivering my mind, God, I thank you. Tearing down strongholds, God, I thank you. Bringing me out, God, I thank you. Giving me victory, God, I thank you. Come on, if you agree with this prayer, come on, let's stand to our feet and give God praise and glory and honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. I said glory to his name. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a wonderful guy. He's a wonderful Savior. Tonight is the third night of Bible. It's the third night of revival. And hey, it's nobody but you and God. Oh, hallelujah. I said, oh, hallelujah. I said, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's great. He's great. Glory to his name. Glory to God. Why don't you look at someone and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. This is the grand finale. Tell somebody else, say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. This is the grand finale. And what is the grand finale? I'm getting it all tonight. Yes. Oh, God. Glory to God. We will be strong. We will be power in the blood of the land there is power power one to work in power in the presence of the heavens no man of the land oh there, there is power power one to work in power in the blood of jesus Send 
so much power in the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. I said demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Praise his name. Praise his name. What we want to honor God. The hill of our lives. We want to honor our pastor, Dr. Cynthia Porter, to our pastor, Rod Porter, to our bishop, Jim, and to our bishop, Jones, to Reverend Hilton, to everyone in their respective places. Y'all, we had the last two nights. I don't know what to call it, but all I'm going to just keep it. We just had two nights of fire. I said, we had two nights of fire. We're going to line the wood up tonight And we're going to set this roof on fire I said we're about to set this roof on fire And when we set the roof on fire Somebody's going to see it on the outside And they're going to say I got to come inside to see what's going on Yeah And I'm going to be on so much fire That my family going to see the fire on me I said, my family going to see the fire. Good God, have mercy. Going to see it on me. And they're going to run with me. Oh, God. I'm so glad that we, I'm glad we in revival. Do you feel revived? Do you feel renewed? Do you feel restored? And even if you don't feel it, I tell you tonight, you'll get it tonight. I said, you will get it tonight. Look at your neighbor said, tonight. Come on, look at someone else and said, tonight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! Yes, Lord. Well, we're going to have our scripture. We're going to have our scripture tonight, my sister. We're going to have our scripture tonight. In Jesus' name, and we're going to keep going on in the Lord, all right? Tell somebody we're going to. A wonderful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song says, Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. We all gonna sing this together. Everybody say, Like the dew. Like the dew in the morning, so gently, gently rest upon my heart. Oh yes, sing it again. Say like the dew, like the dew in the morning. Say so gently rest, 
from the time you woke up until now. And I just want you to take it and throw it at the altar. Come on, do it again. Whatever you went through today, throw it at the altar. We throwing it in the fire. Come on, throw it. Come on, throw it. Ooh, don't you feel better? Don't you feel better? He said, cast your burdens upon me. Yeah. You're a 
what he's done for you for your goodness and your mercy and your mercy toward us sing it again sing it for yourself for your goodness and your mercy, and your mercy toward us we
this microphone around to everybody in here so you can sing it yourself. Oh, 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 the glory. Oh, the glory. So can you take the next 10 seconds and give him all the glory? Can you take the next 10 seconds? Let us all rest to our feet. Come on, let us all rest to our feet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just holler just a second ago. Who just did that? I dare you holler again. You got to get his attention. Holler! Oh! Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to. Oh! Hey. Oh! 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 I feel him in the room. Hey, hey, oh glory. Oh, oh, oh glory. You got a right to praise him. You got a right to praise him. You don't have to hold nothing back. This is a free house. If you want to run, run. If you want to jump, jump. If you want to skip, skip. Do it in Jesus. Ain't nobody going to hold you down. It's nobody but you and God. Praise him, sister. 
Pastor Clem. You don't know my story. You don't know my story. I said, I said, you, I said you don't know my story. What I had to do to hear. You never understand my praise. So don't you try to figure it out. Don't you try to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We're moving along. We're going to have a dance tonight. We're going to have a dance tonight. <laughs> We're going to have praise dance, but I feel a regular physical dance. Oh, oh. That's what I feel in my feet. Lord. God. Woo. You got to write the, y'all clap your hands for her as she prays him. Hey. Lord have mercy. Hey. Come on, you got 10 seconds. Tell you it's a good time to jump in this moment. Yes. You don't know if this moment gonna come back to you. You got five seconds. Hallelujah. All right, you may be seated. You favorite people, sit down. We got, Natasha, cool. we got to move on. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo. Sister Ashley Stowers, she's going to come give us. Woo. Lord, I feel a breakout in this room, Bishop. Woo. Good God. Sister Ashley. Woo. Good God. This is the, hey, the bishop is on the floor. So, hey, this is a good time to pray them. This is a good time to jump in hope. It's a good time. Good God, have mercy. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Ashley, she's going to come dance for us. And then following that, we're just going to go up in the Holy Ghost. Hey! Woo! It's not over to God says it's over It's not over to God says it's over He said, 
It's not over until God says it's over. It's not over to God says it's over. He's with you through stormy weather. Oh God, God I serve. He felt you never. It's not over. Just hold on to your faith. Oh, it's not. It's not over. Oh, he'll make a way for your escape. Oh, 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 oh. he has the last say. He's never lost a care. Cause we won't.
all stand as we receive our preacher. Come on, make some noise if you know it's not over. I said make some noise if you know it's not over. I said make some noise if you know it's not over. Pass it down your row, it's not over. Come on, tell somebody, it's not over. You ain't told nobody. Come on, tell one more person. It's... Oh, surely. Tell somebody, God don't lie. Pass it down your room and say, God don't lie. Come on, let's say a little bit. Surely, God don't lie. Surely, God don't lie. God don't lie. Surely, God don't lie. Surely, God don't lie. Say it. God don't lie. Like you believe it. God don't lie. Surely, God don't lie. God don't lie. Whatever He said, God don't lie. He's going to do it. God don't lie. Surely, God don't lie. God don't lie. Surely, God don't lie. God don't lie. Whatever He said. Gonna do it. Whatever he spoke, we're gonna bring it to pass. Hey. Surely, tell somebody. Surely, God don't lie. Clap your hands. Clap your hands right there. standing can we give God praise for this apostolic leader I honor you woman of God Pastor Cynthia I honor you her husband who protects her guards her pushes her celebrates her I celebrate God for her one of my overseers is here tonight overseer Constance Brown from Baltimore Maryland she's here lead the weapon amen one of the elders that brought her here. Pastor, my sister, uh, she's the baby of the bunch, but thank God for her. We love her. They always dressed up. Wheatley, I love you. Love you. I ain't just start loving you. Been loving you. Amen. Ain't nothing in it. It's just love. Say amen. amen. And some people, you need to be able to fight for it. If y'all bother any of them, I'm going to get mad. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to do a Mike Tyson bite your ear off. You will have one ear to hear. You will pray that you can hear out the other side. Mother Abbott is here. God bless you. We're glad to have her. One of the matriarchs of this region. 
Now, one more time, clap your neighbor, clap your hands for your neighbor. Say, this is for you. Yeah, 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 you're special. Yes, Lord. Be seated, let's hear what he says. My sister and family is en route. They had a little bit of a delay, but I praise God, I did not go with them because I didn't want to jeopardize my arrival. Julie! <laughs> Feels like it feels like old revival around here. I was in I was in the Wawa and the lady, my nephew was there who's he's he was not here yet, but he'll be here. He's personality personified and he was telling people, you know, he always talks and tells them, you know, I'm from Las Vegas and the lady knew he was from somewhere. He said, I'm from Las Vegas. And she said, he said, Well the lady said, Why are you here? She said, My my uncle right there, he's on a revival. And, and the lady, the older lady said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. They went here early and talked about the revival. Yeah, we heard about it. It's something, something old, old refuge. Yeah, I said, yeah. That's him right there. That's him. Surely. Lie. It's good when something starts to happen. The catch is you can't let it die. Tell somebody, don't let it die. This one you can't let die. It don't make sense for him to stir some things for us, to shift some things, for, to move some things for us, and we go back to the norm of stagnation. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with when he shifts us, when, it's, when he lifts us. It's almost like losing weight and then gain all the weight back over one pretzel that was soft and hot. You have to have some discipline to say, I ain't eating that pretzel. And I promise you, some stuff will talk to you. I was addicted to chocolate. Addicted to chocolate. And I didn't have some chocolate one morning. And literally every day, every day, I had an account at the Chinese store. And I would go there at 6.30 in the morning. He had my, Mr. Lee had my cupcakes and Hershey bar and chocolate milk in my bag every morning. One morning I didn't have it, so I went, literally, went through withdrawal. My body started having, and my chest was beaten, so they thought I was having a heart attack. Took me to the hospital, did all kinds of stress tests, EKGs, electrocardiogram, and the doctor came back and said, I don't see nothing wrong. And then a little Chinese lady came in, she's a, a nutritionist, and she said, tell me, hello, 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 y'all, y'all, so, so, y'all. <laughs> She said, write down what you eat every day for seven days. And the only thing that was the same was my chocolate bag at 6.30 in the morning. She said, you know what? I said, what's wrong? What's wrong? She said, you're going through withdrawal. I said, huh? I don't smoke nothing. I'm saying, you know, I was getting ready to go saying, I'm a man of God. She said, no, you're going to withdraw. You withdraw. She said, your body addicted to chocolate. And guess what? I promise you, it's no lie. When I go to pump gas, I can hear the Hershey bar. I'm in joy. I can hear them. I can, oh, Hershey with Hershey, Reese Hershey cup. William. And I'll be at the register. William. I, I go, Lord, let me go get my Hershey. Let me go. Then I found myself putting Hershey, Hershey with almonds in the freezer. Ain't nothing like having a Hershey that's and a snap. <laughs> snap when you buy black. Y'all looking at me like, like I'm the only one addicted, but I know that's a lie. I can tell by some sizes. I ain't the only one addicted, honey. My point is, we can't have good revival and go back to an old system. We can't waste time. Tell somebody, I'm not wasting no time with this one. I'm going to maintain this. I'm going to make sure this sticks. This is going to stay with me. Hallelujah. Let's go to the word of the Lord, Acts chapter 8, 28. Acts 28. Acts 28. We 
We're going to look at verse number one just for reading. We're going to pray that he give us the power to preach. Wheatley's here, so the pastor's the preachingest preacher I've ever met. So please don't score me hard tonight, Wheatley, please. Verse 28, verse, I'm sorry, verse, chapter 28, verse 1. When they were escaped, they knew the island was called Melita. The barbarians show us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received everyone, or received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid, it on, laid them on the fire, there came a venomous or a viper out of the heat, fastened on his hand. When the barbarians saw the venomous beast hung on his hand, they said amongst themselves, no doubt he, no doubt this man is a murderer whom he has, though he has escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffers not to live. And he shook off the beast in the fire, felt no harm. How be it? Mm -hmm. How be it? They looked when he should have swollen and fallen to down dead suddenly. But after they looked a great while, they saw no harm come to him. They changed their minds and said that he was a god. Same in the quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay a sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed, laid his hands upon him and healed him, so that this was done, others also which had disease in the island came and were healed who also honored us with many honors and when we were departed they landed us in with such things as were necessary blessed now in Jesus name we all said amen, amen. would you tell somebody before you sit down live and pass the bite uh -huh. live in past the bite I was listening to Elder Tony while he was exalting us and while I was sitting there I heard the Holy Ghost said I just killed the snake so that's why I made I started dancing and I heard and I knew where I had to come from but I know I'm not the only one that had some snakes around so if you can just pass it down your road say the snake died The snake died. The snake died. I'm not talking to normal people tonight. I'm talking to people that's tired of dysfunctional, dysfunctional people, dysfunctional witchcraft movements. I'm tired of dysfunctional people that are uh, manipulative, manipulative enough to be close enough to me. The Bible talks about that with Psalms. It talks about that and said, my enemies and my foes. My enemies and my foes. There are three types of people. You have your friends who you know who they are. You know they're there. They got your back. They'll ride to your grave with you. You don't have to talk to them every day. I don't talk to Cynthia every day. I don't talk to Weekly every day. But if they call immediately, my schedule adjusts. That's what friends do. I don't hear enough of you. And then you have enemies. Enemies, I can deal with enemies holistically because you know they don't like you and you know how to deal with them because they told you I don't like you. I can deal with the fact that you're woman enough or man enough to say I don't like you. I can't handle you right now. I got to get over myself. I got to get myself together. I can deal with that. I can respect an enemy because at least I know where they're coming from. But when David said my enemies and my foes, foes are those that are close to me and they have the face of a friend but the heart of an enemy. I can't deal with those kind of people. I can't deal with those that are so positionally close to me but they are my main killers. They are the ones that is always doing something and when it's, when it's my time to have celebration they always have something to do. They always are preoccupied but whatever they're doing they want me always at everything for theirs. I wish I had some people of God that's just tired of one way relationships. Uh -huh. I'm tired of one-way relationship. You need some people in your life that's going to go to the end of the line with you. I know, I know that the people uh, have a street word saying ride or die, but you have to have some people that's going to say ride or ride, which means I ain't going to let you die. 
I'm going with you to the end of the line. You can bank on me. If everything falls down, I'll be standing there with you in spite of, and you ain't got to call me. You ain't got to celebrate me. I got your back. Would you just wave at somebody and say, I, I got your back your back I got your back I got your back so it's important it's important that we understand that when we look at this kind of text we have to understand that we have to put in our minds that to resolve in our spirit that we have to now live and look like Christ we have to live like Christ. We can't do this little walk the line and because everybody else is doing whatever. It's not your thing. I know that it's your thing, Diana. Do what you want. I know they say that. And I know half of the church is clubbing now, but I need to take us back to the basics and say, look, it's not my thing. It's what he says. Tell somebody it is what he says. Mm -hmm. You have to understand living for Christ and watch this and living for Christ. You're going to have a problem many times out of Christ or Christians. There are going to be some Christians are going to be mad with you because you're living for Christ. They don't want you to live for Christ because technically you're showing them what they should have been doing. Uh -huh. they, you, 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 you're showing them. I, I'm not talking about real believers. I'm not talking about the Sunday go uh, lucky people, but I'm talking about real believers that this is my lifestyle this is all I have if you don't love all of this you don't have to have nothing to do with me because if loving God is wrong I'll never be right this is my life would you wave at somebody say this is my life Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 12 said and he makes it very plain he said Timothy says uh, that if you suffer with him you're going to reign with him and then he says they that will live godly shall suffer persecution which means some stuff you ought to expect some stuff coming from the devil it shouldn't shock you and keep you clutching your pearls you got to let the devil know what say I ain't scared I don't hear nothing I know I threw you off a little bit, but uh, it's amazing how we have this aggression before we got saved. And then after we get saved, we just punk out. Somebody slap your little baby because they, and, and, and tease the little baby because the little baby is cock -outed. You'll turn Walmart out. Y'all know it's the truth. Now, y'all looking at me like I'm lying, but I promise you, if they called you out of your name, my wife, my wife is mild-mannered. She's not real hostile. She's very mild, you know, and she's real. When we have twin girls and one looks like me but acts like my wife, but the other one looks like my wife's side but acts has my energy. She's, I mean, she's all the way fused. My wife is real small-faced, but I'm round-faced. And one day she came home from taking her to the doctor. And I asked her, because she came home upset. My wife, anybody knows her, I know, uh, my, uh, hey, hey, uh, Quince, my, my godchildren here, hey, uh, they know her, of course, Pastor knows her. Uh, uh, she came home upset, and that's not like her. Huh? What's wrong with you? <laughs> she pacing, she was upset. I said, what, what, what's wrong? What happened? What, did the doctor say something wrong with my girl? Or no. But I was getting ready fighting that off. I said, I, said, I, did, you know, I did a, what? <laughs> you? It was a Scooby-Doo moment. It was like, oh. <laughs> what, did the, what did the doctor say? <laughs> what happened? Please tell me what happened. Is they sick? No. She said, no, they ain't sick. But that nurse asked me, what's wrong with uh, uh, her head? And my wife just, I mean, she flipped the script. What do you mean? What, you know, she went there. She said, what do you mean? What's, it's nothing wrong with her head. She's shaped like her daddy's head. I was, I was like, I got him. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm showing you that there's something down in you that if the right button is pushed, the tiger going to come out of there. You ain't trying to hit it, you ain't hit it, nothing. You ain't speaking in no tongues. There's a tiger down in there. Don't y'all sit here and act like little church liars. I had to go here to show some of you because we sit here as little imposters. Somebody take your check, 
and you know you got to pay your mortgage, your rent, whatever, you're going to go straight colored. You ain't heated it. You ain't heated it. Yes, Lord, go ahead, son. They're going to rob me. That's my little girl. You can go ahead and rape her. Y'all say, something. say amen. amen. You ain't trying to go hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go on, take your clothes off, baby. He's going to rape you. Somebody touch your breast intentionally. On that little Mexican fella, everybody, baby, go yo. You ain't gonna turn around and say squeeze right here too. Say amen. amen. So why do we punk out with the devil? Come think for a minute. Come with me. Why do we allow Satan to bother our thoughts? You don't know what gun they have. You'll go all the way out. All the movements, all the hand signs, all the neck movements. You'll go school day. When you was fighting in school, you put your head. Everybody wasn't up. You put your head. Everybody got beat up. I'm a school teacher. The worst fights to break up were to girl fights. Boys, you can almost, you know, because they, they're going to talk what? What? They're going to do all this little talking. Girls put their head down, beat everybody up. I got scratched. I got stabbed. But we don't have. We do all of that. And I need to remind you, because even though you speak in tongues and go through all of the robotic, the robotics of being anointed, and I don't take nothing from that, you didn't forget how the cake tastes after you spoke in tongues and received the Holy Ghost. You didn't forget none of that. Which means you didn't forget how to fight. You didn't forget how to cuss. But then we come over here on the Lord's side and let the devil beat us in our mind. You should be looking in the mirror and say, what? We don't tell our own self off. I'm in the Bible. I'm in the Bible. Somebody say the Bible. The Bible. The Bible. The Bible. The Bible. The Bible. Ring. Come on. Come on. Come on. The Bible says they that will live godly shall suffer persecution, which means there's going to be a fight from somewhere. And most of the time, the fight comes out of you first. You got to fight to keep your control of your own mouth sometimes. You got to fight to keep your clothes on. Say amen. Well, Bishop Young, the devil ain't bothered me there. Look at you. Nobody wants that part of you. Don't get mad if somebody's having a problem. Let's be fair. Say amen. amen. Well, Bishop Young, I'm married. I'm married too and got more fight because I'm married. Because some people want married folk. But they ain't got to keep them long. Just get a little maintenance and send them back to their wife or husband. And because you're married, they want to attack you. Say amen. amen. Being married ain't going to stop nothing. If nothing else, it's going to make the hunt worse. <laughs> then you got to speak to your spouse and keep her comfortable or keep them comfortable. Baby, nobody, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't. Why are you looking like that? I can't walk around like this every day. I got eyes. You got to know me for me. I don't want that. Say amen. And let me help the men, the women with the men. If a man ain't hungry, he ain't going to eat. Say hey, amen. Y'all looking at me funny. What's wrong? I'm just doing some housekeeping. This is called revival. Say amen. This is not anniversary. This is revival, which means I got to get the house right. Don't look at me funny. Y'all call me and I could be riding my horse and say amen. They that will live godly. Because I'm living right. I'm having a fight. Because I choose not to mess up. I wish I had some toe tappers right there. I choose to remain spiritual. I choose to walk in holiness. This is my choice. And some things you got to let the devil know I ain't messing up. What? 
Test me again. And then you got to burn the snake that keeps trying to test you. See, some of y'all keep hiding Bin Laden. Where's Bin Laden? We keep him. Well, I passed. I don't want to tell who did it. Tell on them. Expose that devil. She said it. Her right there. Pastor, her. It's her. She carrying your bass, Pastor, but she her. It's him right there. Say amen. amen. That's why I love little children. Because little children, they're going to say, ooh, I'm going to tell mom. Y'all so intelligent, you drive and so intelligent, but you're ignorant because you won't expose the devil. Part of the problem is you participate with the devil. So if you start talking, they're going to start throwing that trump card on the table. Oh, Lord, I'm in something right here. <laughs> Come on, son, get on the organ. We get ready to ride it because they ride me kind of tight. I got to shake them off me tonight. Oh, no. You ain't ride me tight. The devil is a lie. Oh, no, I'm a little hungry, too. You ain't going to ride me. I'm hungry. Uh-huh. Walking with him. Have to understand God reserves the right to show himself through your life. He reserves the right to do it. He saved you for this hour. Go further. He saved you to show you all. Oh, you remember the Bible talking about Job. Job, the Bible said Satan and God is having a conversation. God offered up Job. Job had no clue. And see, some of y'all miss it because you don't like when God uh, uh, changes the pattern because you think that he has to ask your permission. You could have called me and asked me. God said to Satan, have you considered my servant slash saved? Watch this, slave. See, when you say you're a servant, in the Hebraic means I'm really a slave. Servant, servant. I'm really a a waitor or waitress in the house of God. Coming, watch this, coming to God in his house saying, hello, welcome. May I help you? (laughs) And we've taught it wrong for years. We said the joy of the Lord is our strength. It expedited us. Joy of the Lord is your strength. Come on, you ain't got no joy, you ain't got no strength. Joy of the Lord is strength. Everybody stop. Look at what you say. And I'm not bothering, uh, 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 I hate to say it like that, but I'm not bothering uh, from what they thought it was, but listen to the scripture. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Y'all looking at me rough, a little funny, because I know what you usually heard. But look at the text, look at the scripture. The joy of who? The Lord is what? My strength. Which means we come to the house of God. God's house. We are the waiter or waitress. Hello, God. Welcome to refuge. May I help you? He asked what's on the menu. Are you hearing me? We have hallelujah with light tears. We have glory in the midst of a tunnel that we can't see our way out. Just like you go to the restaurant, can I have this with light mayonnaise? I like to have light mayonnaise. Can I have fresh fries with no salt? Watch what we do. We ask them for what he wants. We can't keep throwing God something and hope he like it. We ask him what does he want. He says, bring me hallelujah with no tears. Just a hallelujah out of your belly. Bring me a glory in spite of what you're looking at at home. And you got to go to the kitchen of your life and bring him what he asked. Exactly what he asked with the right attitude. I don't care if your back is hurting and your pinky toe is broke and you got cramps. The waiter is not worried, or the person receiving is not worried about what the waitress got going on. Y'all ain't talking to me. Because we come to God and give him all of our excuses of why we won't give him what he asked for. We bring it to him with the right attitude. Watch this, because my tip 
is predicated on my service. I need some of y'all to just nod your head and say, uh-huh, uh-huh. I know you ain't heard it like this probably before, but it's all right. That's what revival does. Say amen. And I ain't, I ain't upset with nobody that you, well, I thought it was right, but I'm not talking about what. I'm giving you, and I'm giving you Bible and facts. Say amen. amen. We bring him what he asked for. Watch this. When we give him joy, why? Because we brought him what he asked for with the right spirit. God received what I brought and starts laughing. Laugh, God. Watch this. Get the money. He laughs. He's excited. Why? Because I brought him what he asked for. He gets joy and then gives me strength to go back and get whatever. Because as long as I'm giving him joy, he gives me strength. I'm not, that's, what, that's what's wrong with us now. Because we think joy is a feeling. Joy is not a feeling. Joy is a hearing. That's why David said, I hear joy coming, not I feel joy on me. You ain't going to feel like giving God no joy. That's why you can't let me or make me feel bad as a pastor because you don't feel like praising I don't care what you feel like. Every once in a while, you got to pack your wounds and praise him in spite of what you feel. And tell that wound, I got to bless him right here. Oh, come on. You're looking at me funny. I'm gonna get, I got more Bible. David says it like this. I will bless the Lord. Where? At all times. Now, don't quote that scripture if you're not ready to walk through all time syndromes. We quote big juicy scriptures, but we really ain't ready for them. Because until you had to sip the cup of grief and then bless him, you really ain't blessed him. Which means I bless him as long as I'm feeling it, God. I bless him as long as everything's going cool, then we good, God. Say amen. Surely! God don't lie. Surely. My Sienna the Wolf Samanaya. Surely. Shamayana. I don't feel it, but I know he didn't lie. Can I go one more step further? I don't like it, but I know he didn't lie. Surely. We sing a song down south. I say, in the good times, praise his name. In the bad times, do the same in everything. Give the king of kings all the praise. Oh. It'll be good as long as it's good. But what do you do when it turns left? Unannounced. So, can I? <laughs> hey, how y'all do? Uh, let me keep going. Can I keep going? Uh, uh, so, to my text. I'm finished meddling now. Let me go to my text. We can start the clock now. Don't grade the first part of this, grade this last part. Uh, here. In the text, it's the first 30 years after the church's existence. Chapter 1, here in chapter 28, we're 30 years later. Here we have the church already started. And in spite of all of that, here comes a problem. Paul has a task. He tells them, don't lose from creek. He reminds them and tells them, and that's why I told you earlier, it's been ringing in my belly, surely. Surely! I don't lie. If God made you a promise, I don't care what it looks like. Don't lose sight on the promise because of the present circumstance. God is told him, watch this, the angel tells him, 
that you're going to go see Caesar. In spite of him going to see Caesar, the Bible said that they had him in captivity. He's in captivity. He is the 276th prisoner. 275 other prisoners are guilty of a problem, but Paul did nothing wrong but became a prisoner because of his anointing, because of his destiny, because of his purpose. You got to remind yourself that as long as you got purpose and destiny, you're going to have a problem out of hell. If you ain't having a problem out of hell, you might be a part-time participant of hell. That's one reason why the enemy is not by devil don't bother me. Well, he got you part-time. That's why he don't bother his own. Come on, y'all ain't talking. Here you have to understand the Bible says and here in the midst of this Paul now he's in a place and he tells them don't loose from creek. If I were you I wouldn't loose. If I were you I wouldn't loose but because of his uh, occupation because of who he is because he's a prisoner most of the time people won't listen to you because technically you're on the wrong side. You're not doing uh, what they want you to do. They won't listen to you until they've gotten in trouble. Anybody besides me only have people honoring what you say when they really need your help. But before time, they wouldn't listen to you. And most of the time, what you told them, they could have avoided a whole bunch of pitfalls. So now no, the Bible says uh, in the midst of this here, here, Paul now, he's arrested because of Christ. He's arrested because of who he is. You have to understand that even now, the way we're living, who we are in God, uh, we're living in an anti-Christian world. I don't care who's running for office. Uh, and I love, I'm not trying to be political, but I can respect Biden more than Trump. Only because at least Biden is a consistent uh, uh, Catholic goer and Trump is Zamashana Maha. So you have to understand in an anti-Christian world, we have to now have a sound belief in who we are. Come on, somebody. You have to understand if you're not in trouble with God, you should be getting in trouble because of God. I'll say it again. If you're not in trouble with God, you should be getting in trouble because of God. Which means I'm going to stand for him even if you don't like it. You don't have to call me no more. If you don't want to call me because of my belief in God, we good. Delete my number. I promise you I will not answer your number if I don't know your name. I wish I had some believers. I will blame you on a telemarket. I'll say that's just telemarket. Blink, nope, can't answer. You have to understand that here now, Paul, Lord, I feel it. Here now, Paul is in a place in the midst of them uh, not listening to him. And please understand, believers, disobedience does cost you something. I'll say it again. Disobedience does cost you something. The Bible says that they did not listen to Paul and because because of that, a Eurocla didn't win rose on the sea. I know that this has been preached before. I'm quite sure you've heard this story, but can I bring my paragraph to the story here? Uh, the Eurocla didn't win is a hurricane and a tornado uniting together. Uh, the winds of uh, a hurricane that's working on the water. And the Bible said that it destroyed the ship. Uh, it destroyed the ship but one thing that God made a promise to Paul he said none shall be lost I wish I had some believers in the room that can remind yourself that you have been the Paul of your family I don't care what's going on around but because you're the one that's been praying God's not going to let nothing happen to nobody because of your prayers you're the one that's keeping the blood stained banner up come on did you not remember that when the angel uh, came to the houses down in Goshen uh, the Bible said that the blood was on the doorpost uh, thank God for some blood believers in the room uh, I know we don't sing those blood songs no more but I do know it was the blood hey I know it was the blood anybody glad that the blood saved you anybody glad that the blood made the storm pass over somebody just wave over your head and say pass over uh, the Bible says that uh, that this now has uh, an effect because 
because Paul was made a promise by the angel. Hey, the promise was none shall be lost. And the Bible said that they made it some on board and some on broken pieces. I wish I had some believers to come with me just for a moment to the Mediterranean Sea. All of a sudden, the Eurocladin wind comes from nowhere. And the shipsman is worried because we didn't see this a four time. Because we're navigators, we know how to be on the ocean, but we didn't see this coming. I wish I had some believers in the room that had to be a prophetic voice to people. And they looked at your cock out because they didn't see it coming themselves. And in spite of all of that, you had the voice and you had the answer in your mouth. But because they would not respect you and they looked over you, but now they still need you. And the Bible said here now, they're in the Mediterranean Sea. And they're moving and floating on a piece of the board. They're floating on a piece of the ship. They're in the waters here. And can you imagine? I don't know what that is bothering my toes. I feel something nibbling on me. But guess what? It might be a piranha, but it can't eat me because there's a prophetic word over my life. I don't even know who God told us about. But I'm going to exist because of what I heard. And what the word that's over my life. People of God, go back to the old walking way. And old songs that keep on praying. The Lord is nigh. Hey, anybody glad that you kept on praying? I know Bobby's still trying to get high. But even on this Friday night, he ain't going to get good and high. Hey, God's going to turn him around. God's going to shake him up. Hey, you might as well don't even waste no more money. Any parents in the room that's been praying and still holding on to God's word? I'm here to encourage you don't stop praying the Lord is nigh keep on praying he's going to hear your cry the Lord has promised tell somebody his word is true he, hey, he made it made it on a broken piece I know you ain't want to tell nobody that you've been on the brink of suicide. Because you Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, Jesus on your side, and you're running for your life. Bring. I know you don't want to tell nobody that you felt like giving up on God. You don't want to tell nobody. But I wish I had some believers like me that would say only thing kept me together was one little song. I cried and I cried while tears was in my eyes. I would sing a song and say, I don't believe you brought me this far. And see what, oh, when something gets down in your belly, you can't even put a beat with it. I, I could, I don't. No, you couldn't. When you get to the place with God sometime, all you can just say is a portion of the, I don't believe. You don't even have a tone with, I don't believe. I don't believe. You didn't bring me this one. Anybody in the room can remember, hey, can remember the song that kept you together. It was a song hey, that kept your mind together. That was the peace that kept you over. That was the board that brought you over. And I'm glad for that little piece that held me up. All I had was a board, but it kept me. Hey, somebody, tell somebody my mind is still together. Finally, watch this. Finally, get to an island. I'm talking to some wrecked people.
people. I'm not talking to you that ain't been through nothing. I'm talking to some folk that got wrecked. You didn't plan. For, come on. You didn't plan for this. I didn't plan for this. My little girls with their little rock trial dresses and all the little beads and all that. That was wonderful when they was from zero up to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Stuff started happening. Ten, my head almost spun around like little exorcist baby. Because I couldn't pick them up like I used to pick them up. Growing up, yeah. Eleven. Daddy. Twelve. Good googly moogly, as the old man would say. Thirteen to seventeen. I didn't know where I was at. And then they were cheerleaders and dancers. And I came from the sanctified church. And when I saw them in their little cheer uniform, I had to pay $358 for three pieces. And I said, what is that? Where's the rest of my $358? Now they graduate in college. Boyfriends. Boyfriends. I'd rather have a boyfriend than a girlfriend come in. How you doing? I'm Big Will, how you doing? Don't Big Will me. I'll take a boyfriend. I'll take a boyfriend. I squeezed the hand. Is that my niece? Hey, hey, niece. I squeezed the hand. Because number one, watch this. I am their first legal lover. The only thing I don't do with them is have sex. I am their first representative of real love. I don't hear everybody. I know them and they know me enough they ain't going to bring nothing home that's not serious because they know who I am. So when they brought them home, I pulled my gun out. Y'all looking at me funny. What's wrong? With three clips. I squeezed their hand. Oh, that bishop is violent. No, I'm not. I'm just protective. I ain't even got to shoot. All I got to do is show it. I got to shoot much. Just show it. I squeezed the hands. I said, let me tell you something. I didn't raise no whores. I was squeezing it too. One was sitting there. Yes, sir, Bishop Young. I don't call them out their names. I said, if they, and I told him, I told him this, look him right in. I said, if they tell me that you put your hands on my children, my daughter, and you touch her, your mother and father won't be able to view your body. I'm going to make sure, because I am a mortician by profession, so I know how to mess up a body that you won't ever to view it again. I wish I had some. Now, y'all looking at me and saying, oh, my God, that seems so cruel. But some of y'all wouldn't have went through some hell that you went through if a daddy would have stood up or if you would have brought whomever, Julio, Pookie, Bowlegged, your boy, if you would have brought him past a daddy or a leader, you would have avoided some mess. So don't look at me funny. I had no problems yet. You know why? Because they know that if they ever have to be dealt with. Bishop William Young. William Henry Young Jr. the third. I'm coming to their defense. Say amen. They on their own. They 21 years old. I still pay their allowances. Why? You don't have to depend on no man for nothing. I'm your daddy. I wish. I'm sorry. I, 
I know I'm meddling, but some of y'all, you, 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 you're in a little exchange episode. And even though you don't want to look at it as though it's not right, but guess what? Prostitution is prostitution. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If you're paying light bills and mortgage and rent, you want something in return. The devil is a liar. Shut it all down. Say amen. amen. The Bible says for me and my house, we go, it don't mean your address, 800 uh, uh, Road, Robins, Road, Robin Street. No, it means house. House, 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 house. The whole house belongs to God. And there's no rental signs here. Y'all looking at me caca, what wrong? And that's not just for females, it's for males too. We got some nasty little hot horny boys. Preach, Bishop. Sad, we send the girls to hell, but we let the guys get away. The devil is a liar. Holiness is for everybody. Say amen. You got to train your body. Shut up. Sit down. Your flesh will have. Ooh, ooh. And this is why we don't teach this in the church. That's why we fall into so much mess. Because we don't have old mothers teaching young girls. We don't have old men teaching young guys. They just put tussy on you and keep you going. You got a mustache, but don't, don't touch nothing. Tell me what to do. Stuff is happening to me and nobody's saying nothing. I need more than just tussie under my arms. And you're looking at me funny, but guess what? Most of your mess ups is after a good hot service. Why? Because your spirit is craving in the air. Your spirit is vulnerable. And your greatest mess up is after you leave a good old hot service. You leave out of here your, your spirit and your flesh is going. Arr, arr. And some of you females, you be, oh Lord, I, mm, I just love the way he prays. Ooh. Ooh. I can just imagine. Mm -mm. I can only, and then you get spiritual, I can only imagine. I'm in this house, Lord, I've been here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm in here. So you have to understand. I need to hear E flat, let me hear it. Uh, here now, in my text. Here, they come to a place called and present rain end up Mashiach oh Lord I hear you <laughs> end up on an island island says can't go back island says too far gone now. Some of y'all in the house, you know you can't even backslide if you wanted to. You can't even do the dances like they do now. You be done broke something. If you start trying to chirk and twerk and shake something, you're going to pull a muscle. Mr. Young, what do you know about twerking or twerking? I had to go and, and chaperone a, a school dance. I'm an educator. I had to go, you know, part of our job was, you know, you got to chaperone. I, gotta, I went there, and they were dancing, and I was like, what are y'all doing? And the girls was doing like this. And the boys was like, ah, and I was snatching, get off of her. What are you, you got God, come on, dog, you messing up. I said, no, you ain't getting on her. I said, you need to stop shaking your behind like, what is wrong with you? She said, Doc, that's how we dance. I was like, oh, God. 
I'm sorry. I'm just telling the truth. Because, see, I came from the, I only went to one, one dance. I was a junior high school prom. I went to one dance. My mama made my tuxedo. And the song was, like a ship on the ocean. I don't know all the words, but I remember the little vamp. The little vamp was, don't rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. And I was out there. I didn't know how to dance, but I was doing the double clutch. That's all I know. <laughs> I was trying to dip with it, but that's all I know. <laughs> One girl came and said, you know you ain't supposed to be in here. You know that's that church stuff you be doing. Don't even try it. What are you doing? In an island. Can't go back. Anybody besides me don't want to go back. And I know another little song, Tony. I know y'all remember this one. Come over here to stay, Lord. Come over here to stay, Lord. Till I die. Oh. And they get caught up in it wasn't a whole lot of stanzas, but that little piece kept us together. Did another song they said, Come on over on the Lord's side. Come on over. Lord side. Over. Over. Peace over here. Lord side. Peace over here. Lord side. Joy. Joy over here. Lord side. Come on over. Come on over. Hey. On the Lord side. Over. On the Lord side. Over. Stay right there. Give it out of the God. Kept me all day. I need my beat, son. Stay with me. Kept me all day long. Y'all pray for me. He been keeping me all day long. And I praise God for got the Holy Ghost. Say sanctify. Fill in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Pray for my strength in the law. Another one, get up. Have you tried Jesus? He's alright. They just they get they get up sick. you giving honor to God kept me all day long to my pastor and my mother saints and friends you know he, he, he kept me all day long <laughs> Pray for my strength in the Lord. Live and he loved me. Died and he saved me. Buried and carried my sins far away. Rise and he justified. Freed me forever. They come out there. One day he's coming back. What a glorious day. Hey, hey, hey. God, the Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. Hallelujah. You know, I had a problem because I didn't do it if I was going to get my light bill paid. But my lights are still on. Who? You know, God been keeping. Y'all pray for my strength in the Lord. Keep me covered in his blood. You know, I, I know Deacon Wilbur going on to be with the Lord. He left me with this car. But God teaching me how to drive. Ha! Y'all pray my strength in the Lord. Let the Lord cover me while I'm driving. Power! Power, Lord!
am I telling you? What's your point? It, it, it was those kind of songs that kept you from wanting to look back. My mind is made up. I'm on my way up. Gonna I'm hold my, my head up. up. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna hold it with the Lord. Lord. Hey, my mind is made, made up. up. I'm on my way, way up. Gonna hold my head up. of determination. Now I like our new praise and worship sector that we're in now because you need the worship to flush. But every once in a while you got to reach back to some old stones because those old stones will keep you propped up. It'll keep your head shot. It'll keep your spirit lifted up. Tell somebody in there, say, oh neighbor, on this island, you need to be able to hold on Yes! They're on an island. The island is called Melita. Place saying that the Bible said 276 of them, not counting soldiers, on an island. And the Bible said that the people on the island were barbarians which means they don't speak the same language. You can do better if you knew the language that they were saying. Because when you go to Hibachi Grill, the only person you see that speaks English might be the hostess. And every time when you get near the money, you're going to always see somebody And they're not going to talk English when they're talking to each other saying, oh, big boy, here, man, eat chicken wing. They say, oh, about y'all, that be all. But they tell you 39.50. They're going to speak that to get your money. But then talk about you in their own language. It's like being on this island. You don't know what they're saying. But all the Bible says that they were no little kindness. Which means they were beyond kind and normal. They were nice over nice. Anybody need to have in your mind and you got to get your spirit ready because God's going to make some enemies be over nice. And some of y'all are not even ready because you still got some ex people. That's my ex boyfriend. That my baby daddy. I can't stand him, Bishop Young. Excuse me. I like what you've been preaching already, but now you're in my business. But I got news for you. God told me to tell you that you got to forgive them that despitefully use you. You got to give up the right to stay mad. You got to go ahead and get over it now. You got to lay hands on yourself and get your own self delivered. Talk in your mind and stop bleeding out on that child. Because at the end of the day, that's that child's father. And you can't keep putting your venom in the child. Because that was your man before it was their daddy. Put that spirit out the window. Tell that spirit, I got to release you now. I'm not mad no more. I wish I had some people in the room to be honest. They say, I'm not mad no more. Oh, Lord, I can't hold no more venom. I can't hold no more anger. I can't stay mad like this because I'm missing my deliverance and I'm missing my own blessing. The Bible said, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, hey, shaking together, running over, shall men. And I need to bother that with you because I'm going to make some people that's going to bring it back to you. But they're going to be the package of your enemy. And if you got unforgiveness not going on, you're going to miss the blessing because you hate the package. You're going to miss the blessing because you hate the delivery person. All I know is I'm going to free myself that I can be free. Free at last, hey. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. I am free. It, it, it's sad 
that, we sing it at a funeral. And the people that need to be free is those that's live. Free me from me. Free me from my ways. Free me from my anger. Free me from my unforgiveness. How long must you hold this bag? It's sad you flush the toilet, but you won't flush your head. It's sad you flush the toilet. You can't even stay in your bathroom long after you did it. You'd be glad to flush it. Sometimes you don't even look at it and see what it was. You just flush it. Oh, I'm in your business. All of us got to flush a toilet every now and then. Don't look at me funny. Say amen. Sad you flush the toilet. But you won't flush your head. You won't flush your emotions. And you wonder why you keep going through the same redundant cycle. You keep changing rappers. But the problem is not the rapper. Because chocolate is chocolate. Whether it's a Snicker, or Almond Joy, or Hershey, Mr. Good Bar. That's what's wrong now. You've been trying too many Mr. Good Bars. Yes! Oh, oh, yes! to get back. Ooh. You done my shonda. Tell somebody, I ain't going back. Come on, tell them. I don't care what happened. I ain't going back. Come on, tell them. You, you, I need you to get right feisty with him. Say, I ain't going back. What? Hit your name and say, I ain't going back. I need all my shia na na. I need you to prophesy to your neighbor and say, I ain't, I ain't letting you go back. You're going to make it. You're going to get through this. It's your season to live. Oh. <laughs> You're going to make it. You're going to get through this. It's your season to live. Oh. oh. You know that, don't you? Hey. You're going to make it. You're going to get through this. It's your season to live. Oh, oh, oh. Tell somebody that. Come on, help me say. You're going to make it. You're going to get through this. It's your season to live. Oh, oh, oh. to stir my pot so I can get the food right. Nothing, nothing, nothing like having oxtails that fall off the bone. Not just have them look good, but when you bite them, your teeth fall in the, in the bite. You want it to be able to pull off with the fork, so can I stir the pot? Tell somebody, say, oh, neighbor, you're not going back. Not you. Whoever's sitting near you, if you can reach somebody, just hit them real. I need you to hit them with a little pressure and say, you ain't going back. Hit them. Hit them. You, you can hit them. Hit them. You, you ain't going back. Try it. You try to go back, I'm coming to get you. 
I don't care where you're at. Can I go further? I said like that, and I'm playing in the water right here because all of us have a comfort place that we hide at. My daddy died. I was out of my mind. I was crazy. I was in a black place. And don't you sit here or let me warn you, if you ain't met the black place, there will be a black place that will come to you with all your, all that, after all that's finished, a black place will land on you. I was so out of it, I would sit in a, in a lawn chair in the cemetery at my daddy's grave because I was out of my mind. Preaching every Sunday. Because psychologically you can do something but still be out of your head. Still function. It becomes habitual. It's technically retardation. Because a little boy, he don't know how much this is. But he knows if I get three of these, one of these, and two of these. And stand on this corner when the big hand is here and the little hand is here. I can get on that bus, and I can go down to school. I go to school by myself. I need some milk. He don't have a clue what that was or what time it was, but he's, re watch this, he's continual in his psyche. His cycle makes him do it functionally. So that's why I'm trying to pick on this with you. Slow this down with good music, good organist, good drummer, but you don't need good black style preaching. You need, watch this, relevance where you've played at. And if you don't have somebody in your life that do like David, that when my heart is overwhelmed, I give you permission to lead me. Come where I'm at. Don't worry about my title. I'll go further. My daddy died on a Tuesday. I had his casket flown down for my brother. The funeral home put him in the casket and brought him to the church. His funeral wasn't until Saturday. I had him at the church on Wednesday. I had him on the altar with a chair leaning up against his casket with me on chairs with my hand in the casket because I was out of my mind because my daddy died. I had him there on Wednesday until Saturday. And she came down south. Banged on the door. Back door. Boom, boom. Just like that. I was mad. Who is this number one? No, I'm in here. She broke in, came in, get up. She saw the chairs in the casket. She said, you crazy. And she said, you stink. You've been in here all this time. She got there on Friday. You stink. You need to go home and shower. Your crazy self. Y'all sitting here like I'm. And most of the time, people let us die. Because one, we don't give real release that if I go crazy, come get me. Thank you. If you got that crazy look on you, you need somebody in your life to say, hey. I'm coming to get you. You ain't going to die on my watch. You ain't watching. You ain't die. She went through a storm. I immediately came up here. What? So here, what? I'm here. Who, who are you? I'm waiting. Who are you? I've been here. Who are you? You just don't know me, but I know them. Who is you? Say amen. Some folk, you got to let them know you ain't going to die on my watch. Come on, prophesy to your neighbor right quick and say, I ain't letting you die. Now, some of y'all, you, you came and you, I know, I know I'm in the church. I know I'm visiting, but y'all are here to see. And if you're not going to participate, go ahead and go home now. Because I'm telling you to tell your neighbor something. And some of y'all looking at me like, like hard rock, like, well, I ain't saying nothing. And you're starting to get on my nerves because you're getting on what? And I told high school alternative school, so I ain't scared. Do not let my license say South Carolina make you think you're going to punk me out tonight because I'm here to preach deliverance to your spirit. You ain't got to like what I'm saying, but I'm breaking your spirit down. The word breaks your spirit down. So 
Well, I'm speaking to the little bully spirit. Well, we got bullies in school, but we got some church bullies that come to church and they sit up like, I ain't doing nothing. What? The danger of that, prophetically, you might not make it all the way home. So don't play with this. Say amen. amen. Here, let me keep going. A little hungry. I need a little sausage or something. I need something. Here, here, finally on the island, Bible says, no little kindness. Bible says that they built the fire. Need to bother that because there was present rain and cold. Rain and cold. If you like me, you can do one or the other. But both is a problem. Cold, we can get a mink, a fox, a leather, pleather, blanket, whatever you got. Break the cold. Rain, you can do an umbrella, boots, raincoat, rain hat, galoshes. What do you do when you have cold and rain? Both hitting. Watch this. At the same time. But the Bible says, when they got there, barbarians, being very kind, number one. Number two, I get out of cold water, battling whatever was nibbling on me, trying to breath stroke. Didn't say everybody was good swimmers, so you got some that couldn't swim good. Finally get to the land in cold, in cold water and can't get warm. Bible says. Bible says, I'm painting, I'm painting pretty, got a little, little brush out. Bible says. Present rain. <laughs> and cold. Get out of cold water to only cold air. Present rain. I can do better if I can just dry off for a minute. I can do better if I can just get a breather for a minute. If I get through one thing, I can get better if I can just get my mind clear. But before I can get my mind clear, here's something else. Present rain. And cold. But the Bible, yes, sir. The Bible says that they built the fire. I need to remind you of the miracle. It's rain, cold, but they built the fire with wet wood. Wood. Atamasia. I don't care where you are. Hey, when God is going to make provision for you, he'll take wet wood and make it burn. I don't care what it looks like. Tell somebody, make it work. God's going to make everything you touch work in your favor. Amen. Tomas Shanda, I need to bother this for a minute because it didn't work before, but you didn't have the right storm. You needed this storm to only get you in position. Go further. If you have the wrong people near you, God's not going to bless you to fatten frogs for snakes. He's not going to bless you. He told you, give not which is holy to dogs. And because you're going to share everything with them, I'll let you go through everything, but now I got you in a, watch this, in an island position. Now he's going to show you the miracle that he's been waiting to show you. 
I've been waiting to bless you. I've been waiting for this moment. Let me hear you along. Look what happens. This is why Shaka. He shows him. Watch what he does. He then shows him. He shows him. And the Bible says, Paul then, and I love this part because if God gives you provision, don't be lazy and not provide or add to the provision that was given to you. Don't let the fire go out. The Bible said Paul went and got more sticks to put on the fire because guess what? It wasn't even his energy that made the fire. If God makes, watch this, preferential treatment for you that you don't have to use no energy for it, why burn it? You know God gave you that house. Why pay your rent late? Pay your mortgage late? Well, I was just going to do this first. Why? You know, but if they ran your credit again, the little machine, the handcuffs will jump out and grab you. We got to. You know it's God's provision. I'm not being funny. I'm just trying to make sure you understand. You know that right now, where you are right now, even economically, you can't even explain it. It's God's provision. And then you struggle paying tithes and you struggle giving a seed. Struggle? Struggle? If they ask for whatever, here's mine. Why? Because every time I do something like that, provision, he'll make a dirty bird bless you. Come on, Elijah. The Bible said he sent the buzzard with food in his mouth. I don't care who bring it. Look at the text. The text says, I'm closing with this. The text says, he adds wood to the fire that's already built. The Bible then says, a viper, a venomous beast, a poisonous snake comes out of the heat of the fire. Which then suggests, why he come out? First of all, the snake been there. He lived there. He only came out because something got too hot. And when you start making things happen, when you start becoming more productive, expect to see snakes that you never thought were there. They might be right next door to you. And when you start talking about we moving out of this house, why you got to move? Why you just, she technically saying, why you going to leave me? I ain't going to have no more Uber rider. You became their Uber. You'd be surprised of how many people has checked in your pattern and watch this. They make their schedule predicated on your schedule so they can have the convenience of them using you. When you start getting out of people's control, they don't like you no more. They can't handle the fact that you're different. I'm no different. I'm just out of your control. Control is this way. They'll call you every day. If you break and don't call them, where you been at? I've been calling you since 3 o'clock. I don't have to answer your phone. Listen to me. The root of control is witchcraft. And some people, you got to break their control off of you. They'll track your pattern only to gauge you. Look what happens. The venomous beast hung on his hand. God will make things get out of their normal nature because the beast, this kind of snake, usually bites, he poisons you, and he goes. This snake bit and hung on him. Catch the text. Watch this. The people then, watch this, when they saw the bite, changed their mind. Because remember, when I got here, y'all were so kind, you was kissing me on the cheek. Now, when you see something happen to me, you change your mind. So where did this thought come from? I need some of you to start checking people around you. 
Because when they can't get celebratory with your success and your next, if they can't get excited about your next, only holding you in your is and only reminding you of your was, don't let them to your shall be. The Bible said it does not yet appear what we shall be. My shall be looks better. Tell somebody my shall be looks better. You're not going to hold me back. Then I'm not going to keep trying to explain to you. The Bible said they changed their minds. Now, this is very important, and I promise I'll let you go. The Bible said he shook off the beast in the fire. Some of you are shaking off too much stuff. Watch this. In loose places, and the whole house gets bit by what you shook off. Some of you married couples, you don't need to fuss in your bedroom. You need to get in the car and go for a ride and have a disagreement while you're driving. Because you shake off some stuff in your house, your whole house gets messed up. Spirits are travelers. They'll sit and nest. They will take on form because you've loosed it in places that you don't need it sitting there. It's like having people come to your house, especially people that is not invited. Number one, I didn't invite you here. Girl, I'm going to check your bedroom out. No, you sit right here in the den because I didn't invite you to come over here. Sit down. I got to go to the bathroom. Go right here to this bathroom. It's a half a bathroom. You ain't got to take no shower. We ain't taking no baths. So all you need is a toilet and a sink. You ain't whining through my house. And you're sneezing and coughing. You ain't coming in my kitchen. Sit down. What am I showing you? Some stuff you got to break it and stop it. The Bible says that he shook it off in the fire. Why? I got to consume this here. Now, look at the next part of the verse. I'm supposed to be screaming on the chandelier, but I need to make sure you understand this. Later on in the text, verse number 8, the Bible says that Publius, who's over the island, the Bible says he now, his father, is sick with a bloody flux and a fever. The Bible says, Paul now, with his bit hand, healed him. I need, that's what the text says. Come on, paint the picture. I need you to take your bit place and make it work for you. See, I, that's why some of you, you can't get so uh, defensive and so angry at your ex and the old people of your past. You got to let them see what you sent didn't work. They're going to say, you still here? I'm here. Y'all still married? We sure is. I ain't know y'all be married that long. I know. That's why I ain't told you nothing. You was rooting for me not to make it. Girl, if I was you, you ain't me. Yo, dude, why are you still doing that? I got to get away from y'all. Y'all don't want me to, su to succeed. Man, I don't never work on no job that long. That's why you sitting at mama house. Say amen. amen. What's your point? What's your point, Bishop Young? Snake is dead. Living past my bite. I need you. And listen to me. You're only as good as what you can show. Paul says it like this. I bear in my body the marks of Christ. Now, this is a show me generation. We're living in a show me time. You got some people, Chai, I don't believe it. Jesus did that with Thomas. He had two places where he was wounded, his hand and his side. Some places is easy to show. But then there's some people you got to open your cloak and show your side and say, girl, guess what? I've been through this like this. Say amen. amen. Now, and I'm going I'm to pray, but I need you to hear me because we can no longer desecrate deliverance. God said, I delivered you, but you're embarrassed to say where you got delivered from. He delivered, praise the Lord. He brought, he brought me out of the mire. No, tell me what the clay was. Was it Play-Doh? Was it cement? What kind of Play-Doh was this? What color was it? Because this generation, they didn't know detail. When we were coming along, they said, don't touch it. We didn't touch it. 
telling these little children now, don't touch something, you might as well go and give them a visa card and say, go on by and touch it, honey. Go on and touch it. Y'all sitting like I'm lying. Am I telling the truth? We have to open our hearts to say, I'm not embarrassed where he brought me from. If you're not embarrassed from where God brought you from, you're not going to let anybody, watch this, make you desecrate your deliverance. Because at the end of the day, nobody brought you out. When I was about to commit suicide and jump on track number six in Philadelphia train station, I didn't care about nobody. I didn't care about nothing or nobody. And I was a church boy. But the church made me so hurt and upset, I tried to kill my own self. I was walking. They called the train. The phone, the pay phone rang. The pay phone started ringing. And back in the 70s, you know, we were running to get the pay. You, as soon as the phone rang, everybody ran to get the phone because you were waiting on a call. And you hope it was a call for your house. So we had party lines then. I'm on the phone right now. My daddy was on the other end saying, Junior. Junior, where are you? I was weeping and crying, said, I'm at this train station. He said, sit down. I'll be right there. I was sitting on the floor when he got to the train station. He said, you can't die. So you think I care about what people think? I'm talking to some of y'all in the room that said, I've been to the end of the line. Anybody besides me? If it wasn't for, come on, if it wasn't for the children, you would have ran off the road a couple times. You wanted to drive away and don't come back and didn't care where you was going. Don't care. Say amen. Listen, I just want to touch and agree with you. God, help us. Thank you for help. Open your hands, open your, open your mouths and just say, open your hands and look in the air and say, even though you would tell your hands, even though I was bit, thank you for help tonight. Listen, it's a bit, listen to me good. He healed the man with a bit hand. It's going to be your bit place that's going to heal them. Lord, that's a good place to holler. It's going to be a, it's going to be your bit place. Y'all ain't helping me right there. It's going to be the pain place that's going to heal some people. They're going to have to hear how you made it through. On a black day. You can't sit here and be in the church. Because guess what? They got a whole bunch of activity going on in the street. And one thing about the street. That the church have not caught. They ain't phony. They are going to tell you. Keep it 100. And the street now. You can't play this little game. Well baby I don't want to tell nobody about me. They going to ask you. Have you been through that? You ever got high? No, I ain't never got high. We ain't talking to you then, man. I ain't got nothing to say to you. You don't know what I'm feeling. You don't know what it is to go through withdrawal. Say amen. I have a brother in my church. He was dancing, doing all the aerobics in church, but he was getting high every service. Soon as service over, get high. He got $8,000 every year for income tax and blow it in two days. I was preaching one service. The Holy Ghost said, tell him today. I said, if you don't leave tomorrow to go to rehab, told his children to stand up, you won't see these two graduate. You will never see them graduate. Guess what? He immediately went and got rehab. Now he's, watch this. Now he's over the drug ministry at my church because some stuff I can't talk about. I pointed to him. I said, go minister to her. Say amen. amen. Everything you went through, your past has purpose. Tell somebody, my past has purpose. And if somebody's not excited about your past, number one, they don't have nothing to do with it, and it's not exciting to them because they ain't been there. That's what's wrong with us now. We keep exchanging information with each other that's why it becomes boring. You don't care about her deliverance because you're glad. I ain't, girl, I'm, I'm over that. I ain't never had that. Well, I did. You see, overseer, 
She killed the man. She was a hooker. But she'll preach you under that chair. And got a church full of young people. You know why? She keep it real. Y'all, oh, some of y'all, oh, Lord, they got a hooker. Yeah. Now look at her good. She 81 years old. And she looked better than some of y'all in your 30s. Don't look at me funny. She my, one of my overseers. 81 years old, look like this. No ailments, no pain, no medicine. Eighty-one years old. I'm gonna preach you on that chair. You know why she keeps it real? Tell somebody to keep it real. And all the young people at her church, she loves them all. They all love her. I take it in my church. Guess what? We have a shut-in. I tell no old people to be there and just leave her there with about sixty young people, and they be wide open. When I come back the next morning, they all cry. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Even with my own children. And I know you're a good parent, but you're in your own house. Some stuff your children won't hear you with. Somebody else got to help your house. That's why I preach like a crazy man to everybody else. But my girls, they call her. Say amen. amen. What's your point? And I turn left in the middle because some of you will not ever get to the place that you will disclose your own pain. And say, this is me. And if somebody can't handle it, that's the wrong crowd. Tell the person that can handle it. She ain't never had a baby out of wedlock. She don't understand what it feels like to be put in the back of the church and can't say nothing. Clap your hands, I'm finished. Come on. Clap your hands, I'm finished. I believe God tonight. Anybody desires prayer, I'm going to pray with you. He's going to do something for us. Tell somebody he's going to do something for us. Would you tell him again he's going to do something for all of us. I, only God can do it. I said only God can do it. Only God can do it. I don't know who's in the room tonight that's, that feels that breakdown place. Bishop, you talked about it tonight. And if that's you, I want to pray with you. If you want prayer, I'm not going to let you just come and then you're going to wait till the line go down. Then you're going to jump up. We're not doing that. Amen. If you want prayer, come right now. Just make two lines in the center aisle. Very quickly. Bishop Young, I, I need prayer because I feel broken. I, I, I feel like I'm going to break down. 